Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. As you know, I'm vibing. I got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, aka the Crypto Beast. We're just taking a couple minutes out of the day like we do every day just to give you uh, a little insight on what's going on in the crypto news around the world. And um, I'll let Scott tell you a little bit more about himself. Yeah, for sure. Scott with Big One, I do the marketing for North America right now, Canada and the US. So excited to be here as always, like every day of the week when we're doing this. I'm always excited to do it. And with everything that's going on in the market today, um, it's going to be an interesting conversation today. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, We'll just jump right into it today. Um, As you guys know, if you're watching this and you're watching this, uh, it's been like a big uh, little crash in the the market here recently. I don't know if it's a crash or just a a little bit of manipulation to give uh, people a little bit better entry point. Um, But the first thing that I seen that jumped out at me today was this uh, article about the Forex dollar climbs with rate high speculation raging from the U.S. inflation surge. Um, so the sterling pound hits the lowest point since de- uh, December. The euro drops to its weakest level since July, and Bitcoin hits a record high before it dropping ten percent itself. So it seems like there's a lot going on in the market, not just in crypto, guys. It's something going on around the entire globe and, and a lot of the, the markets around the world. Yeah, the, this is a interesting market right now, and we kind of have an idea. I'll share my screen here. I'm just going to make sure to switch it to the article that we we kind of know caused the volatility today. So we'll just share this right now. Give me one second. So right here, uh, you can see China Evergrande Group. Uh, Evergrande defaults on $148.13 million dollars. Bankruptcy proceeding begins with the, it's like with the Dutch bank, I believe. Uh, China Evergrande Group has officially defaulted uh, 148.13 million in interest payments. Uh, yeah, which invested. So the Dutch, Dutch market screening, I can't say that last word, which invested in Evergrande bonds is now preparing bankruptcy proceedings against the company. The Chinese real estate developer has defaulted against, again, on interest payments to international investors. The funny thing is like, so yeah, they defaulted and they're losing this stuff or are they, we don't really know. In the end, that would mean that these companies that are in Europe that invested in the companies would be taking over the real estate that these guys own. So in the end, it's still a story of it continues on, but in somebody else's hand. Yep, who's who's gonna take on the the debt mix, right? Like, that's all it is. They're just kind of passing the debt ball around and that kind of happens. Um, And I feel like it's gonna be a lot of that. There's a lot of inflation right now, guys. Uh, This is the highest inflation has been in America in 30 years. Um, so this is a large uh, inflationary. It's, it's, a, it's a large number of inflation that's happened on, on different economies. Uh, so kind of be cognizant of that because crypto kind of it'll be the thing that protects us from this and the government actually saying what our dollars are worth. Um, if we stand together and we put our money together, then we can, you know, and essentially kind of have a say of what it's going to be worth. So I'm going to jump into my next article. Um, I don't know if you guys know about the Landry's restaurant group. Uh, they're mainly famous for like Morton's uh, Steakhouse, Bubblegum, Shrimp. Uh, the Rainforest Cafe and the Palm uh, Restaurant. Um, they recently just partnered up with New York Dig, which is a, a firm out of New York, um, and they're going to be giving away rewards in Bitcoin. Um, so people will earn $25 worth of Bitcoin for every $250 that they spend uh, when they go to these restaurants. So that's 10% of your bill that they're going to pay you back in Bitcoin. Uh, so it's, it's good to see that now restaurants are even getting involved. Uh, not only as form as accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment, but also having a rewards program set up that people can earn Bitcoin for coming in and, uh, and eating at their restaurant. So I think that's really good. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, I think you're like, we've talked about it. We're going to see a lot more mass adoption of things like this with restaurants or credit card companies or uh, different avenues to adopt it. And it's on, it's the thing that we need actually right now with the inflation as high as it is. Uh, this is what's going to drive cryptocurrency to all new highs as well as when inflation is high, you're going to see cryptocurrency climb up because people's uh, feelings on fiat and all that stuff is in a different zone than when they're with cryptocurrency. So you, you're really going to see that, I think, impact in cryptocurrency, even though we had this dip right now, 
just my personal opinion, not financial advice or anything, but I think you're going to see a large increase in volume in, in cryptocurrency in the next little while, just due to what's going on in the world. So I guess my next article that I will share with you guys is, I find this kind of cool. I'll just post up here. Give me one second. I'll just pop on my video here, my share button. There you go. So you can see right here, Coinbase partners with the esports gaming organization competing in League of Legends. Uh, crypto was new to me once, but I started reading and watching it. I realized it was some passing fad. It's here now. It'll be the future, said Team Liquid owner and CEO, CEO, Steve Arkansas. I can't say his name. Team Liquid, the esports and gaming organization operating across major titles, including League of Legends and Fortnite, has inked a four-year agreement with Coinbase. Now, I don't know if you know that. Well, I know this. There was another company that that was working with other people while trying to get cryptocurrency mainstream uh, in the gaming world. And they were really trying. I think they're still continuing on, but this will be a hit to them, I'm betting too as well. But I mean, to get Coinbase into the gaming community is a huge thing. I hope it pushes the computer uh, companies such as League of Legends, like who makes League of Legends or, or make some of the bigger companies to actually start implementing uh, cryptocurrency into their games because this is what's going to drive uh, purchases for skins, different things like that. The younger generation is definitely getting involved in cryptocurrency. So, I mean, it, it's a way moving forward and people need to realize that. And I hope they realize it quickly. Yeah, man. And that's kind of funny that uh, this article comes up because if you go back into our chat today that uh, we were talking about in the Pokemon chat, uh, I was we were all giving each other little plays for today. And um, League of Legends uh, NFTs pre-sale was today. So it happened at three o'clock, which is about an hour and 50 uh, minutes ago on my time. Um, I actually brought this up and told people uh, in our group to be on the lookout for it. Um, so exciting to see that it's in the news and Friday they partnered with EA Sports. Um, a friend had passed info, uh, information along to me and I passed it along to my colleagues. So um, it's definitely going to be some great times ahead with the League of Legends. Um, I think a couple of the NFTs are a bit pricey, um, but I think overall what you're going to be able to do with these NFTs as far as gaming um, is going to be next level. So uh, be, on the, be on the lookout, man. We, all, we know EA Sports is a big 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 sports company and gaming company so uh to see to see them involved with with league of legends i know it's going to be something special man so hopefully my order got filled <laughs> i'm gonna jump into my last article right here uh crypto fest 2021 explores the growing nft and DeFi ecosystem in the future ahead so recently um on october 29th weekend uh there was a conference that was held and it was supposed to be tr traditionally held in south africa they actually had to uh, do it virtually um, this year because of COVID uh, and traveling restrictions right now. So uh, a lot of people that were there, um, it was still 1,649 people that turned out and they were from 49, I mean, 79 different countries and it was 43 speakers. Uh, one of the first speakers that uh, got up was uh, Justin Tron. And if you guys don't know who Tron is or Justin Sun, <laughs> he's the CEO of Tron. Uh, he also uh, has another cryptocurrency and he, he's building a nice blockchain. Um, so he was he was getting up and he was talking with Michael Wu. And Michael Wu was uh, basically going into a detail saying, hey, look, for crypto to go truly mainstream, we not only have to work with regulators and government, but we also have to see crypto as an underlying asset and not a speculative commodity. So this is really big um, as far as like, if we are going to push crypto and crypto is going to be the, the universal uh, dollar so or, or the universal uh, dollar, uh, quote unquote, then we do have to work with these regulators in some form of fashion. Right. Like whether you believe in DeFi, decentralization or centralization, it has to be a part part of crypto that deals with that side of it because you can't leave them out. It can't be mass adoption without, you know, big corporations and big governments being involved. So, um I think in, in what he's basically saying is that they have to also recognize us as not just some a, a commodity, but as a real underlying asset. Like Bitcoin is not, you know, um, some some reckless commodity that is going to go away tomorrow. You know, like so um, the same way we have to get them involved, they have to also give us a chance. So I think that was really big for them to have that festival. And it was a lot of it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of information about this conference online. If you guys want to check it out. That's perfect. Well, I'm you know how I feel about it. Like I know uh, regulation is always going to be a thing. Andy's basically 
made it very clear that regulation is a part of cryptocurrency. And I always listen to what Andy Lynn has to say about it. And it's true, like, the one thing I hope they consider, and like you're kind of mentioning it, is that people that are involved in cryptocurrency definitely have to have a bigger voice than the businesses. That's one thing that I hope does change with cryptocurrency is we will all have a voice, not just the people that are head of companies that are uh, changing things in government positions and all that fun stuff. And I'm not saying it's happening, but it obviously is happening in some things because some of the stuff that passes, it, it kind of makes you question what the heck is going on. So uh, my next article is about right here, Sewell to launch metaverse public service platform in 2022. Sewell says it will become the first local government in South Korea to launch a metaverse public service platform. The initiative is a brainchild of Sewell Metropolitan Government, which will launch a metaverse platform as part of its attempt to create a contactless communication channel in the post-pandemic era. The South Korean capital said in an official release that a tentatively named Metaverse Sewell High Performance Platform would be operational by the end of next year, forging a Metaverse ecosystem for all areas of its municipal administration, such as economic, cultural, tourism, education, educational, and civic services. The city government said the platform would de debut in three stages from 2022, and a pilot event has been slated for the year's end. Uh, this is a major thing, like uh, a country grabbing onto this and, and running with it is showing me that the power of the meta is metaverse is huge. Like, I don't think Facebook is going to be able to keep it uh, centralized or however you say it. I've been saying that the whole time The uh, Facebook is going to have to open up their stuff to allow everybody to run it, say, uh, countries like Korea or Singapore or Sandbox or Decentraland or it doesn't matter allow people to run the apps and run it the way it should be run because there's been a ton of people that have been working on this forever and we need to grow it so the less uh, centralization like protecting yourself the the better off we'll be because once we open up this it's nothing but uh, growth in the future. Yeah, I think with Web3 coming in, man, and you have countries like Seoul or cities like Seoul stepping up and, and giving or, you know, talking about Metaverse, um, it, it all is, it's, it's all just a setup to roll out Web3.0. And uh, as Web3.0 comes out, um, I'm not sure what Facebook or Meta has planned specifically for Web3.0, but they'll have to catch up. Like you said, it's been builders building on this stuff for a long time. Uh, they're comfortable with the Metaverse and building on the Metaverse. So I, I think going forward, they'll they're going to push the realm and how this is going to be played out, especially with the metaverse. Um, so looking forward to it. I'm glad to see Seoul is going to set something up. But in, in my eyes, when these things happen, uh, it's kind of like opening up a new workforce for the government because um, they can tax it. Um, and, you know, people are going to work in the metaverse. It's, it's the inevitable, man. It's on the way. So people got to get used to it. I'm excited. It's fun. Like my son is very much into the Oculus and stuff like that as well. And I'm starting to get into it as well. I mean, better to hop on this train right now while you have an opportunity before it gets too big and you're kind of lost in there wondering what the heck to do. Like, yep. go out and grab one of these things and start exploring and learning. And that's what it's about. So, now yep. on to your favorite subject, though. What's that? The market right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're going to jump in. I thought you wanted me, I thought you had a little surprise for me today. I was like, go ahead, jump into it. Uh, but yeah, well, I like, love like, listening to you when you talk about the market. Like, I know today isn't a great day that it, it uh, bounced down a bit here, but I'd love to hear what you have to say about it as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think a lot of people that's uh, listening, if you, you guys are listening and you see these market corrections and in, in the way they come about, um, these are dips that, uh, allow us to take advantage um you know i've let i've let a few things run and, you know i'll just give you one of my personal things that i have is like xrp you know you know i have a, a bag that i've had since you know 70 cent and uh since it's been trading sideways uh, i went ahead and got rid of it because i'm like you know i could use that money for something else and you know move it around so i traded it and then it took off and went to like a dollar 30. so i was like man you know what i might have messed up but then since uh we've like started this uh this podcast today 
uh, it went all the way back down to 120 and I was able to get back in in a really good position. So uh, make sure you guys are actually looking at this as a, a way to get back in and don't sit over here and look like this guy. Like, don't be sad because the chart is red. Uh, look at it as an on sale. Most of the times you go to a store, the, the for sale sign is red or the on sale side is red. So uh, always look at that. But just to jump into the total crypto uh, market cap today, uh, Coin Geico has it at 2.9. Coin um, market cap has it at 2.8. Uh, regardless, I, I see the total market cap uh, being down about 6% from yesterday. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is still at 43.8 and Ethereum is at 19.5. Uh, so these these values have pretty much stayed the same. I think uh, after today's market close up, if the numbers don't come back up, we'll see the Bitcoin dominance uh, down by uh, a lot. I think it'll get into the 41s. And if that does occur, uh, I'll be looking at some alts to really slingshot um, and push yourself up in, into a great, uh, a really good position for people to get a hold of. Well, and here's the time like the, you've mentioned it before. It seems like during these bull markets and different things like this, this always happens in the nature of the beast. When it comes to cryptocurrency, you got to be aware that these dips are going to happen. This one was a little bit of an uncontrolled dip with Evergrande, but I mean, it's still following the same pattern. If you look back in history, you're going to see something similar to this the last time. So it's just be aware. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited still. I'm looking forward to the growth of the bull market. I still think it's going to be going with inflation going the way it is. I still think we're going to see an influx of people getting into cryptocurrency. So I'm excited. I'm ready to go. My bags are packed. Bags so. are packed, man. When's the next flight? <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Hopefully, uh, I'm going to be trying to get down to Miami in the next couple of days. They have a big uh, NMT conference down there, kind of like what they had in New York. So I want to try to get down there. And, um, you know, if we can get down there, we can do one of the daily crypto news, maybe with some other projects uh, nearby. So um, we appreciate you guys tuning in today. As always, stay blessed. Make sure you guys do your due diligence and protect your bags. Until tomorrow. Have a great day, you guys. It'll Peace. get better, I promise. Well, oh, I don't yeah, promise. Sure. Not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> have fun.